Hey, what is up guys? Jack and Matt here with the Toasty Bros. And after a year and a half of gruesome pain and awfulness, we bring you the arcade cabinet. Let's get right into it, shall we? As a creator, creating content is almost second nature. Once the idea hits my mind, I almost go into autopilot doing scripting, recording, and editing until it's complete. However, getting it seen on the crowded space that is YouTube is a whole other challenge. With TubeBuddy though, you get access to a wide range of tools like tag optimizers and search ranking results to help you optimize your content to succeed on YouTube. Want to give it a shot? Click the link down below to learn more. So as Jackson mentioned, this project took over a year, year and a half to get done, and it's not due to how difficult it was. We probably could have got this done a lot sooner, but anyways, the main focus of this arcade cabinet was we wanted to build the cheapest arcade cabinet that we could, and you know, here at the Toasty Bros, we're all about saving some money. So this thing right here actually cost us a grand total of $100. You heard that right, only $100 to make something like this, which one, is a really cool showpiece and also is functional. You can play games on it. I have Super Mario Bros. 3 up right now. Multiplayer. Multiplayer games, two joysticks, all the buttons and everything. And today we're gonna talk about the process of putting this thing together and how you can somewhat follow along to make one at home. So there is quite a few different ways you guys can do this. So we decided to just literally use a big sheet of plywood that I had lying around. This is like quarter inch plywood, nothing fancy. And it kind of shows because you look at places like the corners and whatnot that we painted and it's not perfect. The other thing is that we hand cut all of this wood. We actually just use a simple skill saw and Zach's artist skill to basically draw every single line that we needed and then I would go and cut it. Matt would be my hold down guy slash camera guy and we basically just kind of went from there. Now, yes, if you have something like a hacker space nearby that has like a laser cutter to where you could actually get very precise cuts on wood, it would be a much easier task and probably affordable because they don't really charge you that much to do it. Because of that, we actually did make some mistakes with the initial cuts. It wasn't a perfect system. It actually slowed us down a little bit. Jackson cut straight through wood at one point. <laughs> um, it, it, you know, it happens with stuff like this. So really the only way to be able to get these type of like circular cuts is if you use something like a jig so you have to use some type of really thin blade to be able to do all kinds of swirls and whatnot. But you know, overall cutting it, it took a while and it took a while to get everything to line up right. But it wasn't the worst thing in the world and it was kind of a bonding experience for all of us Toasty Roast here. Just working outside in the summertime, cutting some wood. You guys know what I mean. So as you guys can see from the budget of this video, the monitor barely even impacted any of it. That's because this is literally like one of those monitors you'd get from your school used or that someone would just throw out because they're really crappy. But it's like a 17 to 19 inch old, you know, non 1080 or anything. It literally uses VGA monitor. Of course, you do have to adapt it from VGA to HDMI for the Raspberry Pi, but that's not a super expensive thing to do. And we actually took the bezels off of this monitor. It's literally just the actual screen. We had to tape some stuff back up after we took everything apart, but it shut a lot of the weight down and it made it to where it's literally just like a panel at that point. And we were just able to actually use some old L brackets that I kind of bent that hold the monitor in place. Obviously another challenge was actually the buttons and like joystick having to do the holes for those. Luckily, I had a drill press. We were able to use hole saws and a drill press and pretty easily size up the holes to be able to fit all the buttons. We'll talk more about this joystick layout later, but let's talk about the painting. And the painting was relatively simple. This black coating right here is just your basic spray paint, just a couple layers of it. It did take a lot because of this cheap plywood to actually soak into it and get a good black color. If you have at least two cans of spray paint, you should be perfectly fine. That's relatively affordable. And then the paint trim, we went with a very basic like hobbyist paint. It's like an acrylic paint that we basically just went through and slowly but surely layers yeah, on painting. layers. It took a long time to do that. There was probably a way better solution for that. And if we did do this over again, we'd probably get better paint just to save us time. But it did turn out pretty good. And it kind of has that old school arcade cabinet look to it. So yeah. it kind of fits the whole retro theme and the paint really did turn out well. And it fits our new uh, color scheme on the YouTube channel, the black, the green, and then we'll talk more about this later. So we got pretty lucky on the wiring. We thought it was going to be like really, really difficult, but it's actually all plug and play. So each one of these buttons has two two wires going to it just to basically have an on off signal. So each side here actually has its own PCB that everything gets plugged into and then it actually just goes straight to the Pi via USB. 
I was really surprised with how easy that configuration was because when we first saw all these wires coming in from straight from China, first of all, China. it took forever for the stuff to show up. We were a little bit concerned, but after getting everything laid out and put together and cable managing it just like the Toasty Bros do, uh, it turned out really well. We actually ended up making this acrylic panel really early from the start and we kind of just left it blank thinking that we didn't really know exactly what we we're going to do yet. We were in the process of like changing our logo and stuff at the time because this was a year and a half ago. And we got lucky, we did this at the very end. This is literally two pieces of sticker paper that we just ran through my printer at home and luckily we had some color ink, you know, so <laughs> we were actually able to make the logo look really nice. Matt just hopped on Photoshop. He was able to actually make it to where it like stretched across two pieces of paper and we just hand cut it. We, it took us two tries because the first one we got a bunch of bubbles and whatnot. The second try though, it laid down really flat. We didn't have any like major gaps or anything, so we just went with it. And then of course it has light behind it, which we'll turn out the lights in a minute so you guys can see, but it's a full RGB spectrum with a remote velcroed on the back so we can actually change the LED color and brightness and whatnot or even turn it off. And we were actually very impressed with how much light actually comes through this panel with just this sticker paper. Using this sticker paper and the way we printed it, there wasn't a whole lot blocking the light. The paper was relatively thin, so you could still see through it. And when we go to the B-roll sequence after this, you will see how nice this actually looks with the lights turned off. So obviously we needed a way to be able to access everything. We didn't want this to be something where we put it together and then there was like no way to troubleshoot it slash work on things. We also wanted to be able to upload games to the Raspberry Pi with the USB drive. So we decided to make a little back door and we were kind of smart with it. We didn't know where this thing was going to end up because it was taking so long. We were like, it could end up here. It could end up at someone's house. It could end up in somewhere public. We didn't really know. So we actually ended up putting a lock on it, which a lot of arcade systems will have locks in them so that people can't just get in and tamper with it. So this actually has a full door in the back with a hinge and a lock. So it's actually a fully functional door and there's enough room to where you can get in there and mess with the monitor. You can change connections. You can even mess with all the wiring up here. And and if you really need to, you can even take this whole entire board off with just four screws and literally have full access to all of the buttons and wiring. Now, one thing we actually realized after putting this all together was we didn't account for a speaker so you could actually hear the game audio, but it's a really easy thing to fix. There's just a three and a half inch jack on the Raspberry Pi, plug in a cheap speaker set into the back of this box and it should do a good enough job producing sound. All right, so that pretty much wraps up this entire arcade cabinet. How about we transition to a little bit of really nice B-roll so you can see exactly what it looks like. So here at the Toaster Rose, we're typically really good about finishing projects. We actually kind of were talking about it and hey, we've really never had anything that we started and didn't finish until we would always come back to this. Literally, every time we'd have this talk, we'd go, oh yeah, the arcade cabinet. That was the one thing that was kind of keeping us from keeping our perfect streak. And the sad part is the last like six months, this thing has basically been done. We just didn't have this. We didn't have the RGB lights and that was pretty much it. Other that than that, it. we literally just needed to do a couple of small things and it was just so hard to find the time, especially with us getting the office and everything. But then now that we're all settled, we're having more time to be able to do stuff like this again and hopefully some case mods coming to you guys sometime soon. So if that's something you are interested in, please give us some suggestions in the comment section down below. We'd love to read over those suggestions. I know Zach definitely will because he is very interested in us doing more case mods on the channel. So let us know and convince us that it's a good idea to make more videos about it. <laughs> convince us to keep him. <laughs> so as always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we will see you guys in the next one. Goodbye. <laughs> It's done, yay! Oh no, god, I'm so happy!